So hi, uh, we are going to get on to the next session on uh, synthetic fibers and plastics. And in the last session, we discussed what is a polymer, right? And we found that a polymer is made out of polymerization. So, simple molecules like monomers. Yeah, the which, uh, polymerized. Which, uh, which gets polymerized to form a polymer. Uh, to form a polymer. So, a student is saying that monomers are polymerized to, poly poly polymerized to uh, to produce poly polymers and we have seen several examples we have seen polyethene right which is out of ethylene molecules when they are polymerized that leads to polyethene we have looked at chloroethene right which is correct so we have looked at ethylene chloride and the polymerization of ethylene chloride lead to chloroethene mm -hmm. right and then we look, we discussed about natural fibers and we looked at cotton and uh, uh, which is polymerization of cellulose which basically uh, forms uh, which is of glucose basically polymerization of glucose which is cellulose and cellulose is makes the cotton fibers and then we have looked at um, also rayon right which is yeah so the raw material which is not Yeah, so the rayon is actually again the, the raw material for rayon is cellulose, which could be out of cotton or wood cellulose. Uh, and then we have seen a six or seven step process through which the rayon is converted to viscose, and then the viscose is uh, passed through a spinneret uh, immersed in sulfuric acid. And then that. Yeah, and that actually gives the uh, rayon yarn, right? So this is what we have looked at in the first session. Now let us continue with the next session where we are going to discuss about some more um, artificial, uh, some more polymers, uh, which are synthetic fibers, which are used for different purposes. And for that, I am going to first start with nylon, right? Now, unlike rayon. Rayon cannot be really called a cold, uh, called as a truly synthetic fiber, because right? Raw is Absolutely, as student told, the raw material is natural. It is actually cellulose, right? Is Whereas so nylon is truly, truly a synthetic fiber because this, the, the raw material is not uh, natural, natural, right? Now, how is nylon produced? Nylon is nylon. produced out of polymerization of amide molecule. Right, so it is produced. That's right. So, uh, just a moment. So, uh, so the nylon is actually made out of polymerization of amide molecules, right? So now what is amide? What do you mean by amide? In fact, it's a type of organic compounds, right? And I want to actually talk to you about amides and give a simple introduction about what is an amide, right? Now, if you look at uh, acids, right? Uh, now, if you look at, let us, let us look at, uh, I'm sure that you have heard about acetic acid, right? Yeah. Now, what is the formula of acetic acid? CH3 COOH. Okay? Now, the this is actually the formula of an acid, an organic acid. Now, assume so if you look at how this is, is, is like this, CH3, C, O, and OH. That is how it is, right? So, uh, C, O, O, H. This is how actually really speaking uh, the chemical, and all these, this, what does this line show? These lines, in fact, shows what you call bonds. So they are, sorry? Yes, so bonds is somewhat like, 
somewhat like joined with each other. It is not exactly that, right? There are different types of bonds. There are what you call sigma bond, pi bond, and uh, and so on. There are different types of bonds. You'll learn that later on, right? But there are some bonds where they're kind of tied with each other, and this is how the 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 bonding is. So you have a carbon atom which has got a bonding with an oxygen atom and with a hydro no and this is what is called a hydroxyl, hydroxyl. right hydroxyl right you might have you might have come across this in acids and bases so, uh, right so hydroxyl but so this is basically what it is now how is an amide formed right the amide is formed if the OH is replaced by NH2 right if the OH is replaced by NH2 that leads to an amide so this is what is called an amide this combination this group is basically called an amide right so an acid from an acid amide can be formed where the OH is replaced by NH2 right so that is basically what an amide is now if i am if i am polymerizing an amide molecule right that leads to formation of nylon right so the nylons are for nylon is produced by polymerization of amide molecules and this is a, a amide molecule okay is this clear any questions students huh So the, the the basic test of an amide is does the chemical compound have as a part of it this group of this group C O N H two. So yeah, so this is a methyl amide, right? This is what is called a methyl amide. Right? I can have a ethyl amide, C S three CH2, CO, O, NH2. This is an ethyl amide, right? I can have different types of amides, right? So, um, uh, so don't don't worry about that. I just want to tell you what is an amide, right? So, is that clear? So. The amides are derived of carboxylic acid. So, a carboxylic acid contains COOH. So, acetic acid is in fact also a carboxylic acid, right? Where the OH part when it is replaced by NH2, right? So, that is so here you have got an acetamide. Acetic acid. So why is it called acetamide? Because CH3COOH is nothing but the acetic acid remember you might have you might have acid base and salts you have discussed about acetic acid this is an organic acid right this is an organic acid and when the so and as I told you it is really if you look at this this is C double O O H this is how it is right now somebody if if due to some chemical reaction this gets replaced right this gets replaced by NH2 right so now what how will it look like it will like be CH3 C double O no, I mean double bond double bond O and NH2, NH2. So and this this combination is amide. So the CH3 minus C uh, that uh, O and down OH is yeah. that also an amide? This is a this is amide. So what has happened is this is that, uh, this is acetic no. This is not amide. This is an acid. It's an acetic acid. See this C O O H I really wrote it showing the bonds. Right? 
So this is how it is organized. It has got an oxygen atom and it's got an hydroxyl atom. If I remove the hydroxyl atom and that gets replaced by NH2, then that leads to amide. So what has happened is, this is acetic acid and from there we have an acetamide. The acetic acid has turned to acetamide when the OH was removed and NH2 replaced OH. So this is acetamide, right? And when I polymerize acetamide, I, that, that actually can produce nylon. No, Sidhu. CH3COOH is and acetic acid. acid. It's acid. It's an acid. From acid. Yeah, I just showed the structure of it, right? So the below thing is an acetamide. Ah, this is amide. So this is acid and this is amide. Okay? Clear? Okay. So this is acetamide, right? Now let me go back. So that I just want to tell you what is an amide, right? So when the amide molecules are polymerized, that leads to production of nylon. Actually, it is not acetamide. It is not necessarily acetamide. It is not polymerization of acetamide. I just showed acetamide is an example of an amide, but nylon is produced out of a complex amide. Right? Polymerization of a more complex amide. So um, it, it looks like this, right? It looks like this. So you can see here, yeah, it is. It is a repetition of a. It's a repetition of this. This is being repeated. You can see that, right? The green things have been repeated. Again. Yeah, again and again repeated. So again, you can see this is being repeated. Right? This block is repeated again, repeated again, repeated again. So you can see. The yeah. So. No, that is nitrogen. It is an amide, right? So NH2 is there. So you can see the amide part here. This is nitrogen, right? And these two are hydrogen. So this is NH2. This is NH2 part, the amide part of amide. And this is carbon, C, right? And this is, this is again hydrogen. Ah. So, uh, so here actually you can see here is and the green one is the amide molecule. Yeah, so here you can see this is an amide molecule, correct. Right? So nitrogen to hydrogen and carbon, oxygen, right? So like that. So you can see that particular block getting repeated again again and again and again. That is basically the polymerization, right? So it's a as you have seen, I proved it has got an amide group, CO and CO NH2, right? And uh, it is a complex amide, and it's polymerization of that complex amide which leads to formation of uh, nylon. Okay, clear? That is the acetamide. I was giving an example of an amide. That is acetamide. NH2. NH2. That is an acetamide. CO NH. Any place where you see CO NH2, that CO NH2 is an amide. No, no, it's CO N. What is H C O N H2? No, no, no. CO NH2. CO NH2 is the amide group. Any compound which got CO. Ah, methane amide is CS3. Hyphen CO CO NH2, CH3 hyphen methyl amide, CH3. So methyl amide will look like this: CH3, CH3 CO NH2. This is methyl amide, or it's also called or or it's also called acetamide. This, you know, this CH3 is methyl. CONH2 is the amide. Right? This is methyl. So CONH2 is just an amide. 
COnH2 is the amide group. It's like saying if I have chloride, sodium chloride, right? Why are you getting chloride? Because of Cl, right? Anything with Cl, potassium chloride, Cl, right? Uh, calcium carbonate, what will be CaCO3? CO3 is carbonate. Similarly, COnH2 is amide. Amide, amide group. It's just like this, it's, it, it, this is corresponding, right? Only thing is, this is an organic compound and this is an inorganic compound. CaCO3 is an inorganic compound, whereas CH3COnH2 is an organic it compound. An yeah, okay? So, that is what it is. And there's three simple amides too. Yeah, there, there's simple amide. But nylon is made out of a polymerization of a very complex amide. Okay? Now, long chain of polyamide molecules. So, you have a long Poly chain. Many amides, right? And many amide molecules. Uh, highly elastic, tensile, silk-like appearance. Highly elastic. What do you mean? It basically can be pulled. It's pulled yeah. It's tensile. It can. It, it takes a uh, strong. Even if you put uh, strong force, tens tensile force, it's pulling apart. Even then, it doesn't break. It doesn't break. And it is shiny like silk, Luster. right? That luster is there, correct? Right. So these, this is what the nylon. So it's a truly synthetic fiber. It is made of amide molecules. We have seen what is amide. Any any compound which got CONH2 in it is an amide, right? And uh, we've seen a simple example where from a um, acetic acid, you remove the OH molecule, the OH uh, hydroxyl part of it. And put a NH2 instead of that, and that an that becomes an amide, precisely, right? So for any carboxylic acid. If you bond that carbon to oxygen, uh, then what will the NH2? Uh, I mean NH2 is is basically uh, you cannot call anything. I mean it is just N nitrogen and two hydrogen atoms. Now, you will, uh, so you don't worry too much about the amide stuff right now. So, if you didn't understand it, that's also fine because you're going to learn it in detail in organic chemistry later on. I just wanted to let you know. I Simply, if I say amide, amide, uh, rather I wanted to show how that compound looks like and what does amide consist of, right? That's why I told about it. But even if you didn't understand, that's okay because you'll be learning about amides, um, you know, carbolic acids, yes, uh, ketones, all these things, yes, in, in detail in organic chemistry, okay? So, you don't worry about that. All right. Now, what are the uses of nylon? So, you, you nylon is used for clothing to create, uh, you know, nylon textiles, right? So, correct, then it is used for making rope, ropes, fishing nets, parachutes, right? Um, so, I just wanted to quickly show you some of these, right? Uh, so, here you can see a parachute. Yeah. So, here, this, this, this part of the parachute is made of nylon. Even these, these strings, which are kind of, they are again nylon, right? Because they're, the advantage of nylon is, it is a, Yes, they can withstand that force, right, and it will not break. So they're pretty strong, right, and they, of course, they don't get wet, and there are a lot of other advantages too. And you can also what color it. It can also, do? sorry. What does the top part do? Uh, okay, so the the top part of the parachute is again made of nylon, and what it does is it actually produces. Now this is physics, right? It produces what you call a drag. Right? The reason is because a person is falling down, it is a free fall, the earth is attracting him because it's a gravitational force. 
and what happens because of this this is there it produces what is called a drag and that and there is going to be friction between this and the air because of which the no that no so yeah so because of that what will happen is that air will be pushing it up like that right the drag the drag of the air will pushing it up and so there will be a tension in this and all of this will have a lot of tension force because the air drag is pushing it up the man's body is pulling it down right so in between all these strings are going to be pulled both ways and so there's tensile force acting on all these strings and still they don't break because they are pretty strong they're made of nylon and so um, the the so parachute is almost completely made using nylon right so uh, you learn more detail about how a parachute work what does this drag mean it is related to what you call aerodynamics right and you learn that maybe sometime i don't know when right so it's related to fluid mechanics and so in fact uh, it's a very interesting subject right you will learn that later probably okay so uh, now uh, that is about parachutes right i want to uh, show you uh, a few more things here so the fishing nets ropes i think fishing nets i don't think i need to explain right so fishing nets which are used for fishing by fishermen that's made out of nylon ropes for uh, rock climbing as a student told the toothbrushes uh, the bristles in the toothbrush which you see every day morning right that is made of nylon why because it it does it is not so stiff it actually does bend but it doesn't break right and it is also but it it is also hard enough so the tooth the bristles in the toothbrush is made of uh, nylon uh, then uh, uh, the the tennis rackets the the strings the tennis rackets shuttle rackets all those that strings is made of nylon because again it has got tens absolutely absolutely it 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 has got elasticity so that when the ball hits it basically can rebound and the ball is thrown back right when it hits on the bat so uh, tennis bat shuttle rackets all these the strings are made of uh, nylon then uh, what is that zip fastener zip fastener is the uh, the the zip in the in your pant right so that is made out of again nylon so there are a lot of things which are made of nylon which is making use of the properties of the nylon which is it is elastic but it is it can withstand real tensile force it it can be colored in different ways it has got a silky nice look right and so there are so many advantages that it's light at the same time it's pretty light right so all these advantages that nylon has which is polymerization of amide molecules right polymerization of amide molecules so that's about nylon and the use of my nylon so that is one class so we've seen rayons we have seen nylon um, now we are going to get into the next type of polymers which is called the polyesters right now polyesters are produced by polymerization of esters esters just like amides is another group of organic compounds which is formed when the organic uh, when the alcohol reacts with organic acids so polyesters um, uh, yeah it is truly uh, so polyesters are truly artificial synthetic fibers and they are the monomers for the polymers are esters right so they are made out the monomer is a ester and these esters when they are polymerized that actually produced polyesters and if you look at polyesters there are different examples one is ecterylene right or terene or dacron as as we call uh, which is the commercial name uh, for terylene um, and polyethene right polyethene tetra uh, tera uh, uh, poly polyethene tetraphthalate it's not terephthalate tetraphthalate polyethene tetraphthalate me just uh, okay polyethene tetraphthalate Uh, which is another example PET I don't know whether you've seen all those pearl pet bottles the PET in the pet that you'll see pearl pet chrome pet 
all these things are the, the, the commercial names of all those bottles. The PET, the PET part is poly, uh, polyethene tetraphthalate. It stands for polyethene tetraphthalate. So next time when your mother says, did you take that pearl PET bottle uh, and fill the water for to take to school? Then you should say, mother, you know what? It is PET stands for polyethene tetraphthalate. Do you know that? Okay. Now, how, what is an ester? So, before getting into the details of polyesters, I want to tell you what is an ester, right? Now, uh, let's go back and look at, just like you looked at amides, let us look at uh, esters. Now, before that, I just wanted to tell you about nylon, right? Now, if you look at the tires, in tires, what is, there is what you call threads. Inside the tire, that's called thread, thread. Now, this basically is what gives strength to the tire. And these threads are nothing but fibers. And these fibers are usually uh, nylon fibers, right? So the thread inside the, the tire is made using nylon. And that fiber is what gives strength because you should understand the tire takes so much of load and there is and the air inside a tire will be at very high pressure and that pressure pushes the tire outward and sorry and the, the 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 air the air which is under air or nitrogen it depends upon the type of tire for example my car i fill nitrogen in my tires right so um, whatever gas which is inside which will be at very high pressure it will be pushing it outside pascal's law uh, dear friends did you forget about it right the it pascal's law the, the all directions, yes. So pressure is exerted in all directions equally, right? And so there now what is happening is there is there is uh, air inside this tire at a very high pressure, and that will be pushing it outwards, right? And the this fiber, which is what is called a tread, T R E A D, tread, which is there in the tire, which basically gives the strength and is able to take that pressure, right? So this tread plays a big role and this thread is made of nylon nylon fiber right so um, it's called the radial tires and in fact most of the cars these days have radial tires I forgot to tell you about that that's why I just thought of talking about it now what are esters so we're talking about polyesters now what are esters right now esters are basically formed when The carbolic gas contains, uh, okay, now the esters are formed, let me give the, so before we looked at amides, right, so let us take an acid again, right, so the acetic acid, CH3COOH, how is the structure, CH3C, double bond O, OH, now what can happen is, this hydrogen, is replaced by a, a hydrocarbon group right like for example this hydrogen could be replaced by CH2 CH3 so we'll have it like this CH3 C double O O CH2 CH3 right now this is an ester so here what has happened is the hydrogen has been replaced by the hydrogen has been replaced by a hydrocarbon group hydrocarbon group and that leads to formation so this is actually an ester so this is an acid what is it? which acid is this uh, that is acetic, acid. acetic acid so the student says it's acetic acid, right? Uh, and uh, then what has happened is the hydrogen in this OH is replaced by a hydrocarbon group and that leads to formation of a ester, right? Now, uh, if you're not understood it, don't bother, right? Uh, don't bother about it, right? Uh, idea is to just give you uh, understanding of what ester is if you no so if you're not understood it don't worry so this is basically what is ester now if I take an ester and polymerize it 
that leads to formation of a polyester right so we are going to look at some examples of polyesters like terene or terylene uh, and uh, uh, you know poly tetra uh, i mean polyethylene uh, tetraphthalate right so we we'll look at uh, these two as examples for polyesters so uh, this is about uh, esters let me just write it here esters Okay. Fine. So this is about a ester, right? Now, when you now, if you didn't understand this, you don't bother, right? Just ignore or I just wanted to somehow I feel very very disturbed to teach somebody uh, without giving any background. It'll be then I I I'll be asking you to mug up something. Right, without telling you what is an ester. So that's why I thought of just talk showing you what an ester is, right? But you will be learning it in far more details later on in organic chemistry. Now, so typically the esters are formed when an alcohol combines with an acid. When an alcohol combines with an acid, that is when organic acid, that is when um, uh, a ester is formed. For example, acetic acid um, uh, combines with uh, No, I think there is a problem. It's not acetic acid, it should be ethanol. Okay, so when the as when uh, ethanol actually combines with uh, phallic acid, right? that actually produces uh, ester and if I polymerize that ester that gives me a polyester right now typically esters have a fruity smell like banana kind of smell right uh, ester molecules can be polymerized to produce a poly polyester and polyester is drawn into thin filaments to form the artificial Yeah, so that's right. So the ester is formed when an alcohol reacts with an organic acid. That is when a uh, ester is formed. Okay. Uh, so, so I think uh, this is this is fine. So what I'm what basically it says is when an alcohol reacts with acids such as acetic acid and phallic acid. That's correct. Oops. Sorry. This is fine. Acetic acid. What is ethanol? Ethanol is an alcohol. It's type of alcohol. Okay. So when the alcohol is made to react with certain organic acids such as acetic acid and phallic acid that leads to production of as uh, esters and when the esters are polymer polymerized that actually can produce polyesters right and when the polyesters are drawn into thin filaments that leads to formation of the fiber the polyester fiber which can be used for various reasons right i hope that's clear to you 
the polyesters and water esters i know that the chemical funda that i talked to you may be little bit you know complex which because you have not learned organic chemistry as soon as you learn organic chemistry it becomes far more easier but so so don't bother about it okay now terylene terylene is a polymer it's a polyester right which is obtained as i told you right ester is always produced because of a, a reaction between an acid and an alcohol so here an organic, an organic acid so phthalic acid is made to react with ethylene or ethene glycol glycol ethene glycol is a type of alcohol right so when the ethene glycol is made to react with phthalic acid that produces an ester and if that ester is polymerized that forms the terylene okay now so that is the uh, thing so the main thing that you have to remember is that it is produced correct and that is what you need to remember i know that it is not it is not a very easy thing to remember these things because you have not learned the chemistry of it but yeah the chapter has it so i think you need to remember right so phthalic acid when it is reacting with the uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, ethene glycol that produces an ester and when that is polymerized that leads to formation of terylene right so uh what are the uses of terylene so terylene is used for various reasons right one is definitely it is used for textiles for make, making clothes for shirts trousers and uh typically what they do is they blend that with they cotton also make a, uh, they, even sometimes in the industry they make a belt uh, maybe on yeah i i will explain that right so the terylene is blended with cotton that means some fibers of terylene and some by fibers of cotton are ah, mixed yeah. are mixed and that leads to what you call polycot or terricot so there is materials for shirts and uh, uh you know trousers and so on which is terricotton right they will say if, if you go to the shopkeeper he'll say uh this is not pure cotton sir this is terricotton means there is a blend of terylene and cotton in that right that is what is terry cotton so this is a blend of terylene and uh, terry cotton uh, a ter uh, blend of terylene and cotton and that is what is called a terry cotton or a terry cot right uh, similarly the uh, there are also situations where we blend terylene with wool and that is what is called terry wool right so you can do that and typically you do that to make the material cheaper because terylene is cheaper than cotton and cheaper than wool right so when you blend it then you kind of get benefits of cotton or benefits of wool but at the same time the textile will be cheaper than pure cotton and pure wool right so um, that is the advantage of uh, of this blending uh then uh, used to make sail uh, sails for the sailing boats now this sails is wrong T this spelling mistake sorry for that sails for sailing boat right what do you mean by that see this is a sail right this this white stuff and it is on that the wind comes and blows and hits on it and that pushes the boat forward right and this so the sails are so important and they are made of terylene again it has to really withstand heavy force pressure of the wind blowing it should not tear right yeah, if it is that is why it's made of terylene if it is made of cotton there is a chance that it can tear right because cotton is not as strong as terylene so the this terylene is used for making the sails for the sail sail sailing boats or what you call the yachts right uh so that is one use of uh, terylene definitely i talked about the textile right then uh, another very uh, important use is conveyor belts uh, if you look at see conveyor belts this is a conveyor belt right uh, it is used in uh, 
in in uh, uh, yeah it is it, the, yeah it is used in airports but more than it is used in industry for example cement industry where they need conveyor belts where very hot extremely hot um, uh, materials uh, will be actually going or will be transported using the conveyor belts very very hot material so, so this this if it is not terrible for example if it was uh, uh, cotton of course it will burn because cotton is in inflammable right so a uh, terrible the advantage is that it first of all can withstand very high temperatures it, it basically doesn't melt right it doesn't react and so because of all that the terrible is very very often used for create making conveyor belts in the industry right so very common examples and you can see this this is used for transporting uh, you know coal or uh, 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 you know very hot materials and stuff like that right uh, very often you can see it in cement industry okay so this is these are the examples of usage of terrelin so we have seen that first example of a polyester which is terrelin the the ester which is polymerized is produced by reaction between phthalic acid and ethene glycol and the terrelin uh, is used for creating uh, fiber which can be used for textiles right and we have seen also it can be used by blending with cotton like terry cotton terry wool we have uh, looked at another example which is for sails of the sailing boats right and then we have looked at the conveyor belts which is another example uh, where the terrelin is used the next one which i want to actually talk about is polyethene tetraphthalate right polyethene tetraphthalate is in fact formed produced out of the polymerization of ethene tetraphthalate not ethene it's ethene okay there's a bit of difference between those two so the polymerization of ethene tetraphthalate right now again the ethene tetraphthalate is also produced by reaction between uh, uh, alcohol and phthalic acid right so that leads to for formation of ethene tetraphthalate and polymerization of and which is an ester and polymerization of a tetra, uh, ethene tetraphthalate leads to pro producing the polyethene uh, tetraphthalate uh, polymer a uh, very very uh, important uh, polymer in day to day use it is used for, syn for producing synthetic clothes uh, which is easy to wash for example uh, the miners right the miners who do the mining they produce put coats or coats on them that is usually made out of uh, polyethene tetraphthalate right because there will be mud wet and all that it may be water flowing and they should all those sh should not wet them right similarly uh, it is used for making containers right so let me just show you uh, a few examples of products made out of uh, polyethene tetraphthalate so here you can see again oh not not this not this not this sorry yeah here see these are all the polyethene tetraphthalate bottles uh, you can see various containers which is used for Uh, containing milk powder your boost or water juices the typical um, you know uh, bottle when you in which you are getting the maza and all that all those are made out of polyethene tetraphthalate right so they are all examples of bottles made out of polyethene tetraphthalate even uh, uh, it is used for making containers uh, for storing things and all that stuff right so that is this is an example of polyethene tetraphthalate then the other example is making magnetic tapes for audio and video cassettes i really don't know uh, i still wanted to show because uh, 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 just to explain but i don't know whether you have ever seen an audio cassette like this have you seen an audio cassette like this you, you you are all people living in the cd and dvd world right so you might not have seen yeah so these were the kind of cassettes in which we used to hear music when i was young and small at your age right they are called magnetic tape audio cassettes and the, you can see the two rolls these this rolls this these two rolls they are rolls of magnetic tape and yeah and 
and there is a way in which the audio can be recorded into this tape right and that is how we uh, and and this this tape could uh, usually kind of play for uh, 60 minutes or 30 minutes there are different types of cassettes 30 minute cassettes 60 minutes cassettes and so on so and this magnetic tape is again made using PET polyet uh, polyethylene tetrapalette right so all these are examples of polyethylene tetrapalette how it is used but one very common example is to make these containers and bottles which you can see in your day to day life okay so uh, that's about pot polyethylene tetraphthalate um, and uh, the next thing which I want to talk about is uh, one more uh, polyester right uh, oh, okay now this is not polyester this is uh, what you call acrylic fiber right uh, so so we have seen polyamide which is nylon we have seen polyester which is terylene and PET. Now we are getting into a new other, another type of polymer, which is made out of polymerization of acrylonitrite, um, uh, acrylonitrite right? Acrylonitrite, where, when you polymerize acrylonitrite, that leads to formation of acrylic fiber, right? Uh, I want to just show you quickly how acrylonitrite looked like. So this is an example of a uh, acrylonitrite. Uh, in fact, this is a propene nitrite. Uh, yeah, typically what it is is that you have got a nitrogen atom here, right? So that's why it's called a nitrile, right? So ac uh, acrylone, uh, acrylonitrile. Uh, if you any acrylonitrile, so acrylonitrile is like a group, just like amide, or just like um, uh, uh, ester and so on, right? So acrylonitrile is again a group, and any compound which has got an ac uh, acrylonitrile group is an acrylonitrile. And if you polymerize an acrylonitrile, that actually leads to formation of acrylic fibers, right? So I know if you get into the chemistry of it, it's going to be tough for you right now, so don't bother about it. But I just want to show you how an acrylonitrile look like. Right, and the main thing is it's also got a nitrogen atom, right? So polymerization of an acrylonitrile leads to formation uh, uh, to producing this polymer, uh, which is the acrylic fiber. These molecules are obtained from petroleum products. So many of these polymers are produced out of petroleum products, right? And very light and soft like wool. So these acrylic fibers are very light and soft like wool. It is used for making sweaters, right? Um, because it's wool like it is used for making blankets and shawls right um, so many of the blankets that we see usually see these days are no more made out of wool because wool is very expensive right so if you want to get blankets which are made of 100% wool that's very expensive so instead we use these kind of acrylic fibers which is wool like which gives that warmth and it which but it's pretty light it's easy to maintain it's washable right there are a lot of advantages that acrylic fibers bring in right uh, so it's like a replacement for wool synthetic fiber which can replace wool right so that's about uh, the acrylic fibers right uh, so I think we will stop with this so we have I'll just sum up what all we'll discuss today we discussed about nylon which is a polyamide and we looked at what is an amide and how the what are the uses of nylon then we looked at po polyesters and 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 esters are really produced usually by reaction between organic acids and alcohol and then we looked at terylene which is produced because of competition uh, and yeah wait so terylene is produced with an ester produced because of the reaction between phthalic acid and ethene glycol right and uh, then we looked at some of the uh, uses of terylene. Then we looked at polyethylene tetraphthalate, and we saw that that is also produced by the action between alcohol and a phthalic acid, right? And we looked at some of the uses of that. And then we looked at the polymerization of acro uh, acrylonitrile, which leads to formation of the acrylic fibers. And uh, we looked at that they are very good replacement for wool, right? And we saw some of the uses there.
So I think we'll continue with the, with some more different types of polymers. We look the, we'll also look at synthetic plastics and what are the very common plastics in the next session. I think probably in, with next session we may be able to complete this particular module on synthetic fibers and plastics. So please revise whatever uh, that you're learning. I would like to also reiterate that please visit our website. It is http colon slash slash navayug study dot wordpress dot com if you want to mail me anything you can mail it on navayug dot study at gmail dot com uh, if you visit this website, you will also see the Google Plus uh, link, which is of, of the community. Please join the community where we can actually have discussions and uh, clear doubts and all that stuff. Uh, this community is very small right now. The idea is to grow that community slowly. So please do join the community and also uh, visit our website. It has got all the content uh, which uh, which has been created for 7th standard and 8th standard. 8th standard is just building up right now. I'm just adding it on a weekly basis. There are also uh, links which shows how you can send uh, questions to me, how you can request for a Google Google Plus video conferencing session uh, with me and all that. Please go through uh, the website and do, uh, keep, uh, do, do keep in touch right have a great day and enjoy your studies next time when you come for the when you attend the next session please see that you have revised the session the, the first two sessions properly before you uh, uh, attend the next session have a great day see you for the next session till then bye bye